Hello everyone, this is Dr. Young, and in this video we're going to talk about how epoxides react with various nucleophiles under basic conditions, right? So we're just talking about basic conditions in this video, In our next video we'll talk about acidic conditions and how they open up uh, in a different and complementary way. So we're talking about basic conditions here, right? I have a variety of epoxides and we'll look at opening them up. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is take a look at what my nucleophile is in this case. So in this top one I have this the NaSCH3. Since it's ionic, right, remember that you're always going to want to split things up. So I've got Na plus, SCH3 minus. And if I take a look at my epoxide, right, I want to go ahead and put my partial charges on here. So I've got a partially negative oxygen, a partially positive carbon here, and a partially positive carbon here, right, just polar bonds. Um, the basic conditions are pretty straightforward, and they, I, I think they make a lot of sense, right? You've got this three-membered ring. It's highly, highly strained. It wants to pop open with these epoxides. And so all you really do with this for the mechanism is that you need to take your nucleophile and have it attack one of these two partially positive uh, carbons. It's kind of like that there's a good leaving group on there because the epoxide wants to open. It wants to spring open. It's kind of like a loaded mousetrap. And so since my sulfur here is negative and these are both positive, it's going to be attracted to one of those two carbons. So I need to make a choice, right? Because if I add to the carbon on the left, that's going to give me a different product than if I add to the carbon on the right. And so all we're going here, the, the way we make our decision is we just go with sterics, just whichever one is easier to get to. So since this is the one on the left is less hindered, let me go ahead and write that, right? This, this uh, carbon here is less hindered. Uh, less hindered, and the carbon on the right here is more hindered. That's enough for us to make our decision, right? The, the carbon on the left is primary, the carbon on the right is tertiary. So we're just going to go for the, the less hindered of the two. So my sulfur then is going to attack um, this carbon on the epoxide. Carbon can't have five bonds, so something has to give, and that's when that epoxide opens up. So that you break that CO bond right there. And that's gonna give us, um, here's our basic carbon skeleton. That O has now snapped open to make give you an O minus, and your sulfur now is attached right here, your SCH3. Now, depending on what you see in the books or worksheets or something like that, you may either see some sort of protic solvent hanging around, or you might see a second step where they add a, um, a, a proton source, but just somehow you're going to get a proton from something. There's going to be some proton source. Because all of these epoxides are going to open up to give you an OH. So in this last step here, you're just going to protonate your O- minus to give you the OH. And so for my final product should be a CH3 with a sulfur attached to a carbon that has an OH on it that still has those two original carbons. And that's it. So I've opened up the epoxide. I attacked it with the nucleophile under basic conditions. And so what we're always going to see is that under basic conditions, um, the nucleophile always goes to the more to the less substituted carbon, right? So when you're talking about basic conditions. So you don't have any acids around, you just have nucleophiles with negative charges. So basic conditions, uh, always we're going to have the nuke goes to the less substituted carbon. Which is what we saw here, right? Again, we had... Um, I wrote down here on this on the, on the starting material that this carbon was primary, this carbon was tertiary, that's still true, right? And you'll notice that nucleophile is on the primary one, not the tertiary one, so it went to the less substituted. Now, we can have all kinds of different nucleophiles, right? It doesn't have to be some sort of thiolate. It could be um, hydroxide, for example. So here we have an NaOH, so we have a hydroxide. And there's not really going to be any difference here. It's just the nucleophile is going to attack the less substituted carbon, right? Because we still have a partially negative oxygen. These are both partially positive. And that one on the left, right, it's the same epoxide, the one on the left is still less hindered. So we still see the hydroxide, whatever the nucleophile is, attack the less substituted. And so again, I'm gonna expect for my epoxide to open. Only now I have an OH here. And then, like we said in the previous version, there's gonna be some sort of um, proton source. Maybe there's some water in here or something like that. But you're gonna pick up a proton from something to give you the hydroxide, the hydroxyl, excuse me. 
to give you a hydroxyl. And so in this case, we have a diol. This is one way to make a vicinal diol. And really, it could be any nucleophile, like I was saying. I'll do one more example with cyanide, a sodium cyanide, just to kind of show you some um, stereochemical effects. I put it on a ring, so you can talk about top face, bottom face, all of that business. Um, if I take a look at my actual epoxide, I'll put the partial charges on there again, so partial negative. This is a partial positive. This is a partial positive. But if you take a look at these um, two different carbons, right, again, it's asymmetric. I have one that's more substituted, one that's less substituted. The carbon on the left, or on the top, I should say, is a secondary carbon. The carbon on the right is a tertiary carbon. So again, if I look at my sodium cyanide, I'm going to go ahead and break this up. I've got Na+, plus, and I've got a Cn-, minus. so I've got the cyanide. Um, again, because this is basic conditions, I am going to just go ahead and attack the less substituted carbon. So that means my cyanide is going to attack this carbon here to break open the epoxide, which is going to give me this molecule. Now note that at the tertiary carbon I had um, that wedge as a methyl, and that O from the epoxide was on the top face, so it's still going to be on the top face. That epoxide is still going to be on the top face that O minus that we're going to get. And the cyanide, you have to ask yourself the question, do you think the cyanide is going to attack from the same face as the epoxide or the opposite side of the epoxide? And since it's an SN2-like reaction, it's going to come in from the back. It's going to do the backside attack. It should be on the bottom side, right? Remember that these are all SN2-like. Those are all SN2-like reactions. And so my cyanide, if it's coming in from the opposite face of the epoxide, the epoxide is on the top face, so that means my cyanide needs to be on the bottom face. So my cyanide will be on the bottom face. Again, we'll pick up a proton, so again we form an alcohol. All of these will form at least one alcohol. And then you're going to add your nucleophile to the other piece. And so that's really all there is to the um, opening of epoxides under basic conditions. You're just going to have that nucleophile attack the less substituted carbon, simply because it's easier to get there for steric reasons. That's it. Um, it will add whatever your nucleophile is. Um, it is going to add on the opposite side since it's SN2-like. So you do tend to get these, these trans relationships. Right? Your, your nucleophile is always going to be on the opposite side of your alcohol group uh, whenever stereochemistry is important. In the top two examples, stereochemistry wasn't important. In the bottom example, stereochemistry was important. So keep that in mind, look at the book, um, look at lecture notes and everything. But if you have any questions or comments, you can leave them down below. And um, I hope this makes a little bit more sense for how we open up epoxides under basic conditions. Take care.